Hey, it's been a bit. I was doing some research on today's topic because I want to do things right by you guys. And I miss using my ThinkPad. I am going to upgrade it a bit, starting with... Okay, in this video, I'm going to replace my old mechanical hard drive on my ThinkPad X61 with a shiny, bright, brand spanking new solid state drive from Kingston. Here you go. I thought it was a 256 gigabyte, but you know, 240 gigabytes, it's still good. I recently, if this is your first time watching this video, I recently brought out my retro ThinkPad X61 from the shadows, dusted it off, and made it into my distraction free writing machine. I created that video and I will link to it below. One of the comments I received from that video was to replace the mechanical hard drive so I would avoid risking losing valuable data because I'm writing a lot on this machine. Of all the videos I watched on how to do this, the best video was created five years ago by this adorable kid, whom I think was either in the fifth or sixth grade, or maybe he was a fourth grader. I don't know. But he explained it simply. No grandiose tech talk. And he made the video with a camera and his iPod Touch. Do you remember the iPod Touch? I used to have the iPod Classic, my first introduction to the world of Apple. I desired to have the iPod Classic again, but one of those modded versions where the case is transparent and you could see the inner workings inside. I already have one saved on my eBay list, and that is for another video in the near future. What I want to let you know here is that it is never too late to learn something new. It's great for your brain, especially if you're over the age of 40 and even over the age of 50 like myself, 60 and beyond. What may seem to be complicated is actually quite simple. Not easy, but simple. When you're curious enough to find out how. The internet is a wonderful thing when you choose to use it in a proactive and resourceful way. I don't know about you, but sometimes having something explained in kid speak clarifies even the most complex topics. Here's a little hack that I'm going to share with you. If you're trying to learn some gobsmack difficult concept, like something in tech, or you're reading something in a book and you're like, I don't know what this means. Copy that paragraph. Go to ChatGPT. You can get the free version. And before you paste that paragraph, ask ChatGPT to rewrite that paragraph in words that can be understood by a fifth grader. You write that sentence and then you paste the paragraph in. And what ChatGPT will give you, hopefully, will be something that you understand better. And if that paragraph is still not understandable, ask ChatGPT to rewrite the original paragraph in words that a five-year-old can understand. You're welcome. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming. The channel I learned this from is called Tech Timony, and I will link it below for your reference. And the two tools that you need, in addition to the materials that you already have, which is your ThinkPad, and your solid state drive is you need two screwdrivers. You need a Phillips screwdriver, which is the cross head here, and you need a flat head. Not those specialty screwdrivers, you know, for those other fruity laptops, which I already mentioned, that have those special screws because they're just special. No shade to Apple. I, I love my Apple products. And I'm so thankful that when I swapped out the battery, the new battery came with the screwdrivers. Anyway, I digress. Let's do this. We're going to change the view. I'm going to change the lighting because it's nighttime. It is about to be 9 p.m. That's what my clock says. It's going to be 9 p.m. Anyways, let's do this. Cheers. The first step that Technimony taught is to turn your ThinkPad to its underside, which we have here and start unscrewing the crosshead screw right here that secures the entrance to the hard drive, that secures the door to the entrance to the hard drive. Like that. And this screw is magnetic. So this is the only black screw, like New York City black. I'm gonna put this in a little catch hole separate from everything else. Bottle caps. I'm going to put this over here for now so it does not escape. So once you have that secured, you're going to take your flathead screwdriver and there's a little notch here and we're going to just place it in the notch and we're just going to gently pry it. There you go. There's the little thing here and now there's a little flap here that we're going to take out. I'm filming with two different cameras. I'm going to take it out with my nail, like so. And we're going to pull it out. And 
I'm gonna crash into the camera. Wah! So the next thing, I'm gonna take off these side legs. Right here, take off this bracket, one bracket, and the other bracket. I think, I hope it showed it on the side. Oh, we have to unscrew it. Duh, oh look, and it's screwed on the sides. Look at that, it's screwed on the sides and not on top. And one of the comments to this video was it was better to screw the drive to the sides because it makes it easier to pull it, take it in, pull it out. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna unscrew the drive. You know what we're gonna do? <laughs> we're gonna move this over a little bit and I'm gonna try to sit down as I film this both and unscrew the old mechanical drive out and I'm gonna try not to there we go, there we go. ready and we will uh oh we're also going to put this in a catch-all we have a catch-all here I will uh fast forward this <laughs> see here he spoke about placement so this open part I guess this is the if you could see here I think he called it the they called it SATA connector that's the SATA connector this is the old drive I need to take out the new drive from its packaging <laughs> and I think why did I not have the foresight to take it out well, it's okay it's easy to get out very lightweight so here goes and you can see it has the side screws and the bottom screws but we're going to screw it on the side so what does that say here mem warranty so we're going to do it this way like so and the SATA connectors on the open area oh, okay this is the closed area he says that the open area has the SATA connector that's the SATA connector okay and now we're going to screw them on the sides back in place so we're gonna the cool thing about this Phillips is that it's magnetic so you can put the little screw in all right here goes and he says it's good to screw it in in a cross set. I'm going to do it lightly first and then we'll secure everything in place. All right, so we have it in place back in the cage the caddy and we're going to put everything back in because i have a top camera so we're going to put the brackets in place okay okay <laughs> Okay, now we're gonna put it we're gonna put it back in this way. Like that. And now we're going to put in the door. Replace the door. Here. I'm hoping I'm doing this correctly. Are you no feet? Hold on. <clears throat> I want it. Okay. 
Ah! <gasps> All right. Snap. You go on feet, right? There you go. Okay. <laughs> Are you still filming? Fabulous. Equally. All right. Where's my screwdriver? Don't you run away from me. Okay, it's in, it's in, oh my goodness, very seamless. Okay, now we're going to check the bios. Lord help me, let's do it. So we're going to now check for the bios. And I'm gonna turn on the computer. And I think when you hit, see the startup screen, you have to, oh, ah, it says here, set up changes system behavior by modifying the bios configuration this is the first time i do this guys okay let's see when i hit continue right set enter i just want to see here installed is that what it is no cpu speed how do you know bios version cpu type installed memory 248 megabyte is that the hard drive i need to learn that i just want to see and they don't see ram date security startup i'm not changing anything i just want to see i have to look that up okay but that's the bios this is the bios here and i'm going to do a little bit more research on the bios to understand it a little better but we're going to um hit f10 to save and exit I'm going to say yes, because I'm not doing anything. Let's see what happens here. Yeah. Oh, my camera just shut down. I now am going to... Oh, look at that. What happens now? What does that say? Well, yeah, because I... Oh, here you go. Look. What is this? Model Kingston. Da, 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 da. What is that? Not valid operating system. Well, because I have to install an operating system, because I want to install Linux. All right. So what we're going to do now is... um. Can we just turn off the computer? Yeah. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install Linux. Well, we're going to turn off the computer now. Okay. Okay, it's off. Hey, if you made it this far, thank you so much for taking the time out to press play and watch my video to the end. I left a lot of my hiccups in throughout the video because obviously I'm very new to all of this, but I'm really interested in it and I'm willing to learn along the way. I included the bios at the end of the video because that was a request that I saw in the comments of the video I learned how to do this from, from Tectimony. I had to look up how do you pull up the bios on a ThinkPad and it's something that is so brand new to me, but I'm willing to learn more about and I will create a video based on what I learned about BIOS. Yes, I am going to make this machine my Linux machine and it will be a Linux. The distro I'm going to put on is Linux Mint and that will be coming very soon. Once again, thanks so much for stopping by. My name is Mina. I will see you in the next video. Cheers. Mm -hmm.